Morning guys, how are we doing? Hope you're good, Monday morning. We are back in the game after a uh, half term out. Hope you had a great week. Uh, hope you missed all the podcasts and the live feeds. So hopefully you're gonna sort of um, value, obviously, all, the, all of them again and get back into routine. So first things first, if you are listening on podcast, please do just drop a quick review. All you have to do is scroll down, okay, and just write something nice, preferably. Uh, and if you're watching on video, let's stick a share on, okay? Um, I really appreciate that. It is fucking freezing, guys. Honestly, I'm definitely going to have to get some gloves going on here because uh, it is. Oh, my hands are numb. I've only been up for two seconds. So um, I'm going to go straight in. Um and share just an experience I had while we were uh, away. So we took the kids down to Eurocamp, uh, just down in Normandy, um, which is about a three hour drive sort of south west of Calais. Um, and uh, it was just a real a relationship builder for me and, uh, and my oldest two um, for my previous marriage. And we just wanted to go away and just do some building, uh, relationship building, just have some time, just the three of us. I wanted the kids to feel, um, I just wanted the kids to get my full attention, you know, with everything that's going on. Morning guys, hope you're all well. I just wanted to give them all of my attention and I had really built myself up for this. Um, you know, I, this was going to be a great week. I wanted it to be absolutely perfect. So, so my devastation was was that on the way down, um, on the way down, literally about halfway between Calais and our camp, my uh, van like just died. Like uh, the engine didn't sound good. It was I, I think pretty much we're gonna get the diagnostics that it's uh, like ruined. It's out of action. So anyway, that broke down, and uh, we were stuck on the side of a really really busy motorway. And, um, you know, in all intents and purposes, it was a pretty scary experience. Um, I phoned up my insurance company and realised that we, um, or even though we thought we were paying the European cover, it was literally only covered for our other car. So we were pretty much on our own. And that was the first point of the day that I felt like helpless, like literally was like, I lit with all of my experience, everything I've been through in the military, um, in life, I literally, life zoomed in on me and my whole world around me just sort of caved in because I just looked at my two kids. I was like, fuck me, what, where am I going from here? How am I getting out of this one? And Because I, I always feel there's a way to get out of something. There's always a way to get out of something. There's always a route. There's always an exit route. There's always a solution. And at this point, I just did not know what to do. So um, <laughs> I actually started crying on the phone to the insurance operator <laughs> going, oh my God, <laughs> what am I going to do? And um, she took pity on me and managed to um, get in touch with the, where she figured out where we were and figured out that we had, uh, we were in a recovery area. So what that means basically is that the motorway, French well, government get the motorway to cut, they basically get the local people to come out and, and pick you up. So there was a local sort of mechanic that came to come and get us. It was about an hour. Um, there was a couple of safety cars there as well who were really nice as well. So um, we, uh, that, this whole ordeal, first part of the ordeal was um, about an hour's long. Uh, and I literally had limited battery as well, so I was trying to make the right calls. Um, I was trying to comfort my boy who obviously could see that I was really nervous and I um, wasn't reacting well. And then Angelina, my daughter, was being absolutely amazing as a, as a mothering figure, not only to Bailey, but to me, um, telling me it was going to be all right. And I think a lot of my desperation was that I really just wanted to get to that camp with the kids. I really just wanted to spend that quality time and I couldn't get my head around the, around it that I couldn't believe that we had fucking broken down. My van has been reliable for five years. Like, it, it's never broken down on me. The clutch went a couple of months ago, but it has never really just crumbled like that. And I, and I just was absolutely devastated and I think that's why I was more in tears. I wasn't more in tears about the fact that if it was just me, and I was stuck out there, I'd, I'd probably be 
a lot different and I, I probably know that I would be a lot different but the fact that I was there I was with my kids my boy's a bit vulnerable as it is he was really nervous and I just couldn't believe that this was happening to us so we ended up at this garage in this industrial estate in this town and I have to say the guy was brilliant for us um, he he was really good and I just didn't know what the fuck I was going to be doing I was like are we going to get to the camp? Am I got, are we going to miss our holiday? I think that was what was leading me to be really, really upset still. Um, and I kept on, like, just feeling helpless. Just, like, the feeling of helplessness, helplessness was just overwhelming. Um, and I didn't know where to go from here. I couldn't get in touch with my partner. So I phoned the kid's mum, who we get on really well. And she's very, very good at this type of stiff, uh, stuff. And without me even thinking, because obviously I wasn't thinking clearly um, on my cloud, I, I just didn't know where we were going from here. So she managed to find a company who would come out and grab my van and um, do the pickup. So we managed to arrange all of that. I managed to phone, get a couple of good quotes, managed to get somebody and, that, and, and the van should be coming back this week. Somebody will be picking up and bringing it to my local garage. Um, but then the next feeling was, Oh my God, how much does it cost to, to get your van back? So we, we were looking at £1,100 straight away for, for someone to come pick up my van and bring it back. But I think I was thinking a little bit more clearer here. So um, by the time we got back, I was just really pleased that we were away from the main road and that the kids were safe. They were just playing. Bailey was definitely still nervous. Angelina was being fantastic still. Um... And then I, I, we we then uh, suggest, Kate then suggested, look, get a hire car and let's get you on the rest of your holiday. So we uh, we had to phone. I had to phone around um, hire cars. So we found uh, a hire car place, Enterprise. And um, basically, when I phoned them, they said that I could only go from Rouen, which was this city slash town, to the campsite and back to Rouen, which then left me like four hours train ride to get back to Calais, Calais somehow um, and in the end I just had to take it because I just had to get the kids down to the campsite we just had to, like I literally just was like fuck it we'll figure it out we got a couple of days to figure it out so we took the 50 mile taxi which cost me a fortune to this Rouen we got into the car we got to the rental car and luckily enough this woman was so amazing and she could pretty much tell that um, we'd been through it. I literally been crying most of the day. <laughs> and uh, she took Peter on us and she allowed us to drop the car off at Calais, which was just a massive fucking win. It was just a massive win. It was huge, 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 huge. You know, and it, this whole ordeal was about five, six hours, you know. And I just literally, I can't, I can't tell you how helpless I felt in front of the, in front of the kids, and um, when I was reflecting on it all week, I was I, I definitely feel that if I wasn't with the kids, I would have been much better. But I think just the overwhelming want to have spent that quality time with nothing ruining it, ruining it, um, was the overwhelming factor that actually was the cause of me being so upset and so distracted and, and not as focused. Uh, and as the day went on, we, you know, we, we got through it and, you know, lots of tears down the phone to mum, to partners, to amazing people that were trying to help us on the other side. Um, you know, people phoning me up, us saying they'll come and get us and stuff. It was just incredible amount of support. But I, I think that sometimes a lot of us feel this in everyday life, you know, and sometimes we don't necessarily need to go through the experience of what I went through to, to realise just how valuable time is with our loved ones and our families and just how lucky sometimes that we feel that we we have our situations and I sometimes feel so grateful for the fact that everyone like dug out blind for us you know we're so grateful that I had those people around me to pick me up you know and on our little drive when we picked up our hire car we all we all had a little cry we all like just had a little sing-along on the way down to the camp we got to camp and uh, I took a picture of all three of us, and you could just tell from our embrace that we had been like through this emotional roller coaster. And from the next day, we didn't even think about it. So Tuesday, right through to leaving on the Friday, we just did not think about it. We didn't talk about it. 
we had the most amazing time. I felt a lot more closer to my daughter and, and, and my boy as always. And we all, I felt like we had all been through that experience together, which just brought us closer together. And sometimes things happen for a reason. Maybe that is one of the things that, you know, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, I don't know. So it was really interesting, you know, and then on the way back, we, we had some other issues as well, but you know, that wasn't really, uh, didn't make, really make me feel helpless. It just felt me very, make me, made me feel, sorry, my numb, my uh, jaw is numb. It made me feel very emotional about driving home. We saw the spot we broke down. I was obviously very anxious that we would get to the ferry without any issues, which we did. And we basically just got home and it was good. So we just got to sort out of the van next week. But, you know, help, feeling helplessness, helpless um, is, is so, it's so like, I don't know, it's very difficult because it just puts you in a state of mind where you feel, God, we are so vulnerable in life. Like we're so vulnerable as humans, as men, as dads, as women, if women watch, you know, we don't realize how vulnerable we are and how vulnerable we can feel and how it can affect us. And at the time, there's not really much I could probably say because you have to ride out that storm. And on that Monday, we were riding out that storm. We were surfing that wave. But I think the key is to move on. There's no point in dwelling about it. There's no point in stressing about it. There's no point in stressing whether the, how much this van's going to cost, whether it's going to be back on line or not, because it's going to be what it's going to be. And actually, none of that matters. None of that fucking matters. The only thing that matters to me is that we got those, those three and a half days of quality time in France. And I don't care about the van. Like, literally. Like we'd literally buy a £500 run around. But it doesn't matter. But I, but I understand that we are vulnerable. Every single one of us is vulnerable. You know, we can all be in that position. And takeaway points are, make sure you have European cover. <laughs> It would save you a hell of a lot of money. But I just thought I would um, share this story with you because I want you to, I want you just to be aware of those feelings and that it's okay that sometimes in your everyday life you may feel like literally helpless. There may be something going on at home in your relationships or with your kids or with your job and you just feel helpless about it. You know, what are you doing? And it's okay to feel like that, you know? It, it, you know, it, it's really, it's really building you up to be stronger and more resilient and overcome more adversity and just take it as it comes, you know? And, and I think that's what you really, really, really need to focus on is look at, look at the positives, overcome the adversity, learn to be stronger, learn to be more resilient. I will now certainly be a lot more resilient in those situations. Um, yeah, I, I, I am superhuman, guys. Honestly, I don't mean that as a superhuman. I am 100% human. I like. I, I think some people think that because I talk on here and do the podcast that I don't have any prob- like any problems. I literally go through something all of the time because we all do. Every single one of us does. Just because I'm here and I run a brotherhood and I coach 100 people, the only reason I can coach them so well is because I go through so much shit myself and have been. Just my coping mechanisms are really strong at the minute. My my ability to adapt and overcome to a situation, okay, was tested to the max. And I didn't I didn't meet up to the standards that I probably would set myself on that Monday, but that's because I had an emotional heartstring, uh, heart pull with the kids being there and not wanting to let them down. You know, and Angelina come out of herself like on that day. She literally came out of herself. She was so mothering. She was in control. She's only 13. She was taking charge of her brother, taking charge of me. And uh, she was brilliant. It was amazing to see. It was amazing to see. But hey, look, one week later, I'm back here, back to routine, back to doing what I love. Um, So um, I hope that that story, you can resonate with it maybe at some point. But certainly if you ever come across something where you feel helpless, you can certainly take some of what we've spoken about and go deep breath, take a knee, compose. Let's roll with these punches, okay? Because in the bigger scheme of things, 
you know, I wasn't in a helicopter that crushed outside of a stadium. And when I look at what happened, the tragedy that happened over that week, over the weekend just recently, I literally can't get my head around it. You know, I literally could not get my head around it. And it suddenly made me and all my problems feel very, very small because I'm still alive. I'm still breathing. I still get to go home to the kids at the end of the day. Whereas some people, unfortunately, where terrible things happen like that, they don't. So you've got to put it into perspective. At the time, it's fucking, you're riding out uh, uh, the big waves. But then you come out on the other side, guys, you'll be stronger, more resilient. All right. Um, I hope that helps in some way. I don't know how it's going to, but I, I, I just think, you know, hearing about these stories, hearing about real life situations and how you can put them into your own is, is, um, is, I find it quite um, comforting when I listen to people on podcasts and the struggles that they've had, but how they've overcome them. And I just thought hopefully that this would do the same. Um, listen, I hope you have a great day. Good to be back. Um, I've got some good videos going up on Instagram as well. If you're not following it on the uh, Instagram, it's at the dad's coach. Uh, oh, mate, sorry, I didn't realise. Um, but it's, um, it, it, I look forward to seeing you all in a week, getting these podcasts up. This will be up at some point today. I've uh, got loads of great content coming up for the week. Uh, and I, for those guys that start no trial, I will look forward to seeing you uh, starting today. I'll catch you all soon.